doing it. And let me now recognize one of those creative people who uh, contributes to the vitality of, of what we do. Baton Rouge High School student, Brianna Smith. Brianna, and, and her mother is with her as well today. Brianna won the Louisiana Poetry Out Loud competition and is gonna represent Louisiana in the finals in Washington, D.C. next week. This was a program established by the National Endowment for the Arts in 2005 and the Poetry Foundation, and it has now grown to include more than a million students across the United States. And Brianna and her mother, Sonia Smith, are with us today, and I want to invite her up here to give us a taste of her tremendous poetic talents. Brianna? Good afternoon. Once again, my name is Brianna Smith, and I'm honored to recite At the New Year by Kenneth Patchen. Okay. In the shape of this night, in the still fall of snow, Father, in all that is cold and tiny, these little birds and children, and everything that moves tonight, the trolleys and the lovers, Father, in the great hush of country, in the ugly noise of our cities, in this deep throw of stars, in those trenches where the dead are, Father, in all the wide land, waiting, and in the liners, out on the black water, in all that has been said bravely, in all that is mean anywhere in the world, Father, in all that is good and lovely in every house where sham and hatred are. In the name of those who wait, in the sound of angry voices, Father, before the bells ring, before this little point in time has rushed us on, before this clean moment has gone, before this night turns to face tomorrow, Father, there's this high singing in the air. Forever this sorrowful human face in eternity's window. And there are the bells that we would ring, Father. Other bells that we would ring. Thank you. All right. Let's talk creative communities for a moment. The Louisiana Creative Communities Initiative is an innovative program designed to build capacity and direction for creative placemaking in the state. The principles of creative placemaking bring art and culture to the center of community development and economic development. Uh, incidentally, this initiative was the first of its kind in the entire country. The project was produced by the Office of Cultural Development in partnership with the Louisiana Cultural Economy Foundation and the National Consortium for Creative Placemaking and involved more than 120 people from 10 districts, cities, and regions throughout the state. So during 2013, the 10 selected communities were assigned a trained coach and they engaged in creative placemaking strategies to improve their communities by leveraging cultural development opportunities. Each community was successful in using creative placemaking in diverse ways to reach that goal. Each community developed teams that included local government, economic development officials, as well as arts and cultural development stakeholders, bringing together leadership from across the community in a holistic fashion uh, to bring to the table in some cases for the first time ever, arts and culture as an integrated part of community development and economic development. And their successes we're delighted to share with you today. I'll ask the Lieutenant Governor to join me to present proclamations to uh, representatives from the creative communities. We will be recognizing 10 of them. And as you hear your community called, Please come forth and join us. Phil will have the proclamations. And I'll begin with Corridor Desart. 
This partnership of communities in St. Landry Parish includes Arnoldville, Grand Coteau, and Sunset, and it seeks to connect cultural hubs of activity and help create new ones. Following Arnoldville's New News Art Collective model, these communities are cultivating the presentation of emerging fine and crafts artists, focusing on sustainable practices to maintain and improve the area's quality of life through arts and culture. And I believe we have two folks uh, from this partnership. Uh, Parish President Bill Fontenot, would you like to come up and join us? Uh, as well as Jennifer Casanova, both representing Corridor des Arts, which has just caught on fire across all of St. Landry Parish. Congratulations and thank you. Next, Monroe, and they're represented today by Tommy Usri. Thank you. What began as a Monroe project quickly transformed into a Monroe, West Monroe project called Ally the Alleys which plans to connect cultural activity between Monroe's Art Alley and West Monroe's Antique Alley through signage, crosswalks, murals, outdoor performances, and other collaborations. You know, the light bulb moment in this project was, uh, was that arts and culture demonstrated for the greater community the importance of collaboration. You know, these are two communities, and I think Tommy has uh, mentioned it as well as others from the team, that all, don't always see eye to eye, and this project really demonstrated for them how arts and culture could take the lead in bridging the communities, and even through the bridge. The bridge that divides became the, the, bridge, the bridge that united. It's a wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Christine Abair is here representing Plaquemine. The Plaquemine Creative Placemaking Plan envisions a locally based, multidisciplinary arts organization to provide leadership for the parish's wealth of artistic talent and a collaborative approach to growing the arts and further connecting their benefits to the entire community. Congratulations to Plaquemine. Next, we have Aaliyah Casborn representing Mandeville. The Mandeville plan called Mandeville Art, A-R-T, Art, Recreation, and Treasures. This is a collaborative that seeks to serve as a single hub to develop more collaborative programs to engage the community. This includes art strolls, art in schools and public places, as well as the establishment of an art passport to encourage activity and excitement. Congratulations to Mandeville, the team from Mandeville. <laughs> Minden. The Minden team developed CLIC, C L I C, Community Linked in Culture a diverse group designed to manage the initiatives designed in their creative placemaking plan. That includes an alliance to spruce up East Highway 80, community movie nights, a public art project, music festival, as well as utility pole beautification. Their excitement is contagious and the list goes on. Congratulations, Minden. For our Southwest Louisiana Creative Placemaking Project, we have Erica McCready from the Arts and Humanities Council there, and I believe she will be joined by DeRitter Mayor Ron Roberts, one of several ele elected officials who participated in their creative placemaking uh, initiative. The Southwest Louisiana team, which includes leadership from Calcasieu, Cameron, Jeff Davis, Beauregard and Allen Parishes adopted a cohesive approach to creative placemaking through their live, work, play, and stay plan. Their vision includes inspiring investments in cultural and natural assets, strengthening diversity, nature, and growing artistic enterprises, along with enhancing and energizing the area's gateways and corridors with creatively inspired sensory landmarks. 
Congrats to Southwest Louisiana. Joy Banks is here representing Mid-City Baton Rouge. The Mid-City Baton Rouge team plans to use its established arts base to bring residents and businesses together to spark cultural and economic growth through developing a Mid-City gateway sculpture for visual identity, reaching out to local schools to grow area support for arts education, as well as public art projects and more. The light bulb moment here was, uh, was when this organization steeped in years of community planning uh, determined that the missing link all these years in prior plans was the art link and now it will be a part of how they plan in the future. I'd like to ask Parish President Bill Fontenot to join us again as well as Jim Bradshaw on the Washington, Louisiana project. The town of Washington has created an initiative that will focus on city beautification and arts and culinary development through community projects, mentorship programs for area youth, using a local greenhouse, an art gallery, and an annual art event. In addition, the town is working on a partnership with Reconcile New Orleans and Cafe Reconcile to launch a culinary training program in partnership with the area Votech School. Congratulations to Washington. <laughs> Anne Piku is here representing HOMA. And this is a lovely project because it really shows you where historic preservation, Main Street, and cultural district development can truly come together under the banner of this Creative Communities Initiative. The HOMA plan recognizes downtown HOMA as the heart of Terrebonne Parish and leverages innovation and creative collaboration through revitalizing historic landmarks, stimulating pedestrian activity and interaction, reconnecting the importance of downtown, creating collaborative artistic opportunities, as well as forming a bridge for all the public to reconnect with downtown. Congratulations, Anne and the HOMA team. And our 10th community for the initiative uh, is Old Algiers, and they are represented here today by Valerie Robinson, Carrie Maggio, Lynetta Gilbert, and Beryl, is it Rakus? I hope I'm not messing up Beryl. Uh, representing Old Algiers, their plan focuses on incentivizing much needed property renovations in the Tesh Newton Street area, where the community farmers market and art market are located. The goal is to bring historic properties back into use and commerce, as well as to robustly promote the markets, breathing new life into the area. Old Algiers, congratulations, nice work. I'm also pleased to recognize uh, some of our community coaches. Uh, throughout the course of this project, approximately 20 Louisianians have been or are currently being trained as community coaches. This is so important because it means this work can continue as our communities engage Louisiana's trained coaches to assist in their creative placemaking network. And we have some of those coaches here with us today. Well, and I'd like to begin by the person uh, who, with, by introducing the person who primarily uh, uh, assisted us in getting this work started. She's the first Louisianian to receive training in uh, creative community development through this uh, community coaching model, and that's Wendy Benscoder from Shreveport. She is also, she assisted us as the statewide liaison for this project and is doing fantastic work uh, along at, uh, with Pam Atchison uh, at Shreveport Common. Uh, coaches here today include, and please call as I uh, say your name, Renee Chatelaine, Farley Cook Jackson, Jennifer Guidry, Gay Hamilton, Margaret Harmon, Jackie Lyle, and Leon Steele. Please give them all a round of applause.
They and others helped us by learning on the job and then applying that learning to assisting the 10 communities you just saw before you. And uh, surveys from those communities tell us uh, that uh, almost unanimously, the communities uh, believe that this initiative uh, really will have on the ground traction uh, to assist them in improving their communities broadly and more specifically using arts and culture uh, as a way to benefit their communities. Uh, as we uh, adjourn our morning and lunchtime segment, I'd like to ask the men and women of the Office of Cultural Development, the Lieutenant Governor's Office and CRT to stand and be recognized. That's our village folks and it takes all of them. I couldn't be more excited about today's projects. Uh, today we focused on shining the light on 10 uh, communities that were engaged in the Louisiana Creative Communities Initiative. This initiative trained coaches to work with community leaders to really bring the arts and culture into how their communities plan how they move forward. And so community development conversations were paired with economic development conversations. And for the first time in many communities, arts and cultural development were in the middle of those cohesive, holistic community conversations. So that as a group of leaders across arts, culture, uh, the political arena, the economic development arena, all of those leaders could come together to do more cohesive planning for the benefit of their towns and cities. We did a uh, creative placemaking, uh, had an opportunity to uh, meet for about six months and worked with the downtown area and all the cultural organizations in our area and then put together a plan that we could make the arts bring downtown Monroe back again. And what kind of reaction have you had so far? How, what has it meant for the community? Oh, well, we've got new restaurants that have opened. Uh, we've got some new galleries that have opened downtown. The, uh, the river market, it's just really brought people back downtown. The uh, uh, Preservation Society has gotten involved. All the, the uh, older buildings in downtown, they're going through and renovating those and bringing business back to downtown again, like hairdressers and, you know, things that people, you know, services that they need. So it's been quite a boon to our area. So we were a part of the Louisiana Creative Communities Initiatives and we established a committee of 20 to 25 individuals that focused on creative placemaking in, in the Mid-City area. What has this meant uh, to the entire community? Wow, we wanted to use the existing gems of our community to bring arts and culture as an economic community and cultural development initiative. And what kind of response have you had so far? It's been a great response. It's been a, a snowball effect. What we're going to do is continue the initiative to bring existing uh, businesses and structures to life that may have not been used before. And we're going to do that to uh, and, and incorporate our arts base to um, infuse economic development. The city of Minden came together along with Cultural Crossroads, who's an arts organization that spearheaded the whole effort for the community of Minden, and uh, just worked really hard to uh, explore and uh, find experiences that could be available in our community, cultural experiences, and, and how to grow our cultural economy. What kind of response have you seen so far? It's, it's been a great response. Uh, we've had uh, from the uh, planning stages and implement, implementation stages, we've seen great cooperation in the community. We've seen an excitement and an understanding more of cultural growth. What would you recommend to other communities? I would recommend to get on board, uh, follow this process, follow it through, recognize and identify your strengths and weaknesses, and, and make some plans for the future. We began the planning process for a project based upon the Café Reconcile model in New Orleans to train young people in uh, culinary skills and life skills and so forth. And so what we have done essentially is to use the money, a seed money for uh, other grants and, and for training things and to begin the process also of putting together a small art gallery in the town from an old deserted church. And uh, so between those two projects, uh, we're, we're trying to just enhance the cultural level in, in Washington, which is um, 
uh, one of the historic Washington's the third oldest town in the uh, state and in the entire Louisiana Purchase. It has a great many old homes. It has a great many. Uh, it's on Bayou Catawba. It has things to attract it to, to, to tourists, and we want to capitalize on that uh, through our art and through our food. We are excited to have won the award. What we've been working on is bringing arts to the downtown area, which also brings economic development. What kind of response have you seen so far? It's been overwhelming. We've had three uh, local artists move into the downtown area, and some of their paintings have gone for thousands of dollars. What would you recommend to other communities? To get involved. It's a great uh, experience for downtown. It brings new revenue downtown. It brings new people downtown. And again, it creates economic development. We were one of the 10 communities in the pilot program, and our project spans two parishes, St. Landry and St. Martin parishes, and was uh, based on the concept of an art trail uh, that linked the two parishes and the communities within them through the back roads rather than the interstates. What kind of response have you had so far? Well, we just uh, held a very successful second annual open studio tour earlier in April, and it really generated a lot of awareness about the artists in the area, in the rural areas, and how they actually uh, create their art. What's your reaction to uh, the potential that this offers for your community? This is a wonderful opportunity, especially for parishes like the, the ones along the corridor, because they are uh, they do represent some of the underserved areas of the community, and we have a real great opportunity here to reach out to them and educate them on the arts and show them how they can incorporate the arts into their everyday lives. Those 10 communities uh, are being recognized for their cultural contributions. We have mayors here and community leaders from across the state who are going to be recognized for their efforts in promoting the culture of their particular community or their region, which uh, is something that's marketable for each of these areas. People are very interested in authenticity when they travel, and we encourage people to travel all around Louisiana because we're a very authentic place. We're a place that treasures preservation and treasures our history and our love of the arts and all its uh, components, performing arts, culinary arts. Uh, visual arts, all that's being celebrated today. Louisiana, more than almost any other state, uh, is so deeply steeped and rooted in its traditional culture. As the Lieutenant Governor mentioned earlier, we do preservation better than so many places, and there's a reason for that. Our culture here is very deeply rooted. It's not unusual, for example, to be a fifth generation artisan in Louisiana, and most states aren't like that. Most states have more of a, a commuter culture, and this particular state has a deeply rooted multi generational culture. Culture. And I think it's that culture that propels great, great opportunities that we've already seen and opportunities that we've yet to see in cultural development. So bringing people together to think about that culture as important assets and opportunities for community improvement, it, it just opens up a world of possibilities. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? Well, they can always go to LouisianaTravel.com, our website that will put them in touch with a number of links that we have where they can experience these cultural activities in every uh, nook and cranny of Louisiana.